Now here we have a Hubbard squash, we have blue pumpkins, princess pumpkins, or what we call Cinderella pumpkins. We all, my kids always call them princess pumpkins. They just look like the little coach in Cinderella. You can see the blue pumpkins are blue. These are also a nice bumpy variety. Here we have what we call turban squash. And it looks like a little turban, or like a little Japanese guy here. We have acorn squash. Was uh, really a dark green, like this, see this green right here, it was really dark to start with, and then it starts to ripen up. When it turns this orangish yellow color like this and starts to turn about this color to this color, it is ripe and ready to, to, ready to eat. Uh, it's sweetened up and it's at its perfect stage right there. So you want to go ahead and get this to, to eat up. Remember, your smaller winter squashes will ripen before the larger winter squashes. So these will stay, you know, the thicker skins and stuff, these will stay a little longer in a cool, dry basement area or cool, uh, part, dark spot of your home. Keep these away from a furnace, away from heat, away from a stove or a dishwasher. Uh, keep them in a cool area of your room. Uh, uh, here we have another form of a Hubbard squash here. But I kept them here for the uh, time right here on my dining room table. If you remember some of those videos, I had them sitting here. And they've lasted me almost two months so far just on the dining room table where it's cooler in this room. And now the Christmas decorations are out and it's time to do something with the fall decor and these were the ones I did not put outside I left them in here so that way I could use them and again by the front door here is a really cool spot to decorate and to keep these so if you use these uh, like the blue pumpkins and the Hubbard squashes and, and, the, and the larger things like pumpkins they get a thicker skin on them and they will last longer and what you want to do is just incorporate them in your decorating that's the perfect way to store them keep them in a cool spot like I did right here and I don't keep these lights on very often. I actually, we live in the country, we don't get a lot of guests. So I just keep the lights out. And this helps keep these cool by the front door. And this is just a great spot to have a little fall display, an edible fall display. Right here would be another really great place, away from the fireplace, away from the heat of the kitchen. But, but you know, right here as a desk display. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take some cooking spray. I like the Crisco butter spray. It gives it a nice buttery flavor. And we're just going to put that in a small pan. We've got brown sugar, one dash of salt just to bring out the sugary flavors in your food product. And here I've got the acorns. Uh, I've washed this really well with a scrubby. I've just washed it and rinsed it really well. Let it dry. And now I'm just going to take, and I want to show you how the seeds are sitting the directional in there. And I'm just going to cut the top and get it started. Just be really careful. Don't let your kids do this. There we go. Just going to be really careful getting that top off there. And some of this flesh here is still good. So if you're cubing it, that's I'm fine. I'm just going to deseed this. But the best way to deseed this isn't now, it's after you've cut a few more. Um, there we go. Make sure your knife is on there nice and square. Sometimes you've got to give a little rocking motion. There we go. And yes, you can save these seeds. Put them in a glass of water and let them ferment for two days. Dry them out on some parchment paper. Give this a rock. There we go. There we go. I feel it giving. There we go. Or you can roast these seeds. They taste a lot like pumpkin seeds. Oh, this smells so good. You can tell by how it's bending and how tough it is to cut that this is right. It smells absolutely heavenly. It's going to be a spoon. And we're just going to fish out all this part right here. If you get this and you make this when it's still green, you just don't have the sweetness to this like you normally would. 
Okay, we're just going to fish out all of this part here. Yes, it is. All right, now we have a beautiful little floweret ring here, and we're just going to set this down inside of a greased baking sheet. And you can layer them, that's fine, that's not going to hurt anything, or you can spread them out flat on a cookie sheet to bake. That is fine as well. Just want to get all of this off of here just like that. And yes, you can use gloves. This is grosses you out, the feeling of this. If you don't like slimy things, just use gloves. It's fine. Now, for the sake of the camera, let's just pretend like I'm either going to wash these up and roast them or I'm going to uh, save them and plant them. And I think I'm going to save them and plant them. Or maybe a little bit of both. You can do both. It doesn't matter. Now, let's pretend like I got all of this done. And what I'm going to do here is you can either melt butter or this is zero calories. And I'm just going to spray this just like this on here. Just a little dash of salt. That is it. And just a little bit of brown sugar sprinkled on here just like that. Maybe just a hair bit more. Now there are so many things that you can do with a dish like this. You can add a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. You can add some ground clove, some nutmeg, some cinnamon, apple pie spice. You know, just give it a smell. Mmm, that smells good. See what kind of mood you're in. We'll do one of each. Here's some pumpkin pie spice. That's a little bit. Oops. Here's a little pinch of ground cloves because I like cloves and I like rubbing cloves on my hands when I'm cooking in my shirt. There you go. Makes me smell like I've really been at it in the kitchen. Nothing turns a guy on more than that, right? Okay, so um, so now what you want to do is you just want to pop this in the oven. And what I do is I like to cover mine with foil. Here I had some foil that I reused from a pie. Yes, I reused my foil. I told you everything here is about reusing. Okay. Right here's enough servings for two people right here, just two of those slices. And you pop this in a 375 degree oven, okay? And you can sprinkle some raisins or some currants on this, whatever you like. And you just pop this just like this in the oven for a 375 for about 25 to 35 minutes, okay? It should be a little bit more than fork tender. I mean, it should, it should be pretty tender. And I'll tell you what I like on here is I actually like salted sunflower seeds sprinkled on mine with none of the brown sugar or anything on it. Just sprinkled sunflower seeds on here with a little salt and pepper and baked. That's good too. You know, the sky's the limit with this. You can put, you can put uh, acorn squash in soups. You can put it in stews. You can uh, put it in all kinds of potato type casseroles, like cheesy au gratin potato casserole. You can just chop some of this up right here, some acorn squash up in cubes, and add that as well. Uh, you can mash it like mashed potatoes. You can make it into a pie, uh, into cookies and desserts. Like I said, anywhere you would use pumpkin, you can do this. That's right, Lexi. Now here I'm just going to take, because I like my uh, Korean raisins and I'm almost out. And then here are some dried cherries as well. We're just going to sprinkle that in here like this right here. go. Yum. Oh yes, I know. Lexi says yummy. She's been outside all day. She misses mommy. Okay. Give that a little bit more of a spray. Cover and put this in the oven. And we'll see you back here in about 25 to 35 minutes. And you can take the rest of this and you can slip it in a plastic bag. There's so many this. things that you can do with this. And here, I'm just going to slip these directly into the refrigerator for tomorrow. Now about halfway through the baking, I flip these over. And you can see it's starting to make its own juice from the brown sugar. But I went ahead and took about a quarter of a cup of boiling hot water. Just a little bit, didn't even really need that much. Just enough to add some moisture underneath the foil. Now I'm just going to uh, slip this back in the oven for about another 10 to 15 minutes. And this should be done, soft like apples in like apple pie filling. That's about the, the, the texture that you want of, of the rings.
Okay, we'll be back here in about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, here we have it. We have some beautiful acorn squash with dried cherries and cherry cranberries and just some good healthy squash right here. This has a lot of vitamins and nutrients in it. And when you steam this or even steam this upside down, you keep a lot of the nutrients in this. And this is just really healthy and good for you stuff right here. And you can make this savory with some rice, you know, stuffed rice, cornbread, and maybe some cranberry stuffing. Uh, maybe, you know, you know, if you're gluten-free, maybe a gluten-free type stuffing. Or you can do the brown sugar and cinnamon or pumpkin spice or apple pie spice, whatever you like, right here with some brown sugar. And that's what we made here, something on the sweet side. And then here we have some lemon buttered peas, which the butter already melted off. And then um, right here, and we don't, I don't salt and pepper my peas. I put like a little bit of lime or like a little shaker of lime crystals on there, which is what, you know, John and I like. But you can do with them whatever you like. They're just a really good a sweet pea from the garden. And then right here we just have some mushrooms and some homemade mushroom sauce. And on a bed of rice, just some parboiled rice, delicious stuff. Then a little bit of my mushroom sauce with the mushrooms and then right here is some grass-fed beef that we have in the freezer that we just absolutely love and once you get used to eating grass-fed beef and Angus um, if you do eat meats then you'll understand there's a big cry between it and the hormone filled uh, meats and things so just try to go as organic as you can in your lifestyle and watch yourself get really healthy just eat a couple of fruits and vegetables every day and uh, take your vitamins that's good for you take your vitamins and in your food stores be sure and stock plenty of vitamins but also stock foods like this and this is peas from the garden uh, grass-fed beef uh, normally I'd use my dehydrated mushrooms but I didn't I've got another recipe I'm going to use this for so and then over here is that beautiful acorn squash and I just made mine in like rings just like you would apple rings and you could also fry these in a pan and some butter if you'd like as well. You know, you this just cooks a little bit longer than an I'm apple. I'm going to grab a fork here real quick, and we're going to give this a taste. John, you want to come in and give me what you think? Okay, first we're going to go, oh, i got to go with the squash. I'm sorry. Got to do it. Got to do it. We'll feed a hubby first. Mm. Let's peel off this outside piece here. Okay, just peel that right off. I don't eat that part. I guess you can. All right, let's give hubby a bite and see what he thinks. Very good. You like that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. What's that remind you of? Remind you of pumpkin or apple? What's it remind you of? It's got a nice flavor. Kind of a, a flavor of its own? Mm-hmm. Okay, again, I don't eat the skin. Sorry, I don't do that part. Ugh. It's just me. Here we go. I got a little thing here. Mmm. You know? To me, it tastes like um, a cross between apple and pumpkin. It's good. That's actually really, really good. Mm. You're not going to be able to take just one bite of that. Homegrown peas. Mm. Just let the heavy hubby have a bite of the, his peas. This is his plate. Mm. <laughs> it's good. Mm -hmm. And here's that grass-fed beef that you got me, John Boy. Yes, I feed hubby. We share a plate. Ooh. Let's see if I can get in here to it here. Ooh. A little bit of the rice. Okay. Great. My rice done? Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> it sat here a little bit longer than everything else. I'm going to take a bite, and I'm going to see how this tastes. With a little bit of that rice. Some mushrooms. There we go. Mm, happy. Hubby's happy. Mm. Happy hubby. Mm. Now, here's something else that you can do with acorn squash. Instead of doing the rings like I did, which is how we like it, you can also cut this in half this direction and put it upside down in a baking dish with about a half to a cup of water. About a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of water would be sufficient enough and it'll kind of suction into the bottom. And then you cook that for about, oh, 25 to 35 minutes. You'll know when it's done because the flesh will get a little bit darker, especially if you've got a nice dark green one that you're doing. Like I said, I let mine ripe and turn yellow. I get a sweeter one that way. And that's the way that I like it. But you can use them straight from the store in their darker original collar, which was, you know, more that darker collar right there. But you can either slice them this way in half, or you can slice them this way in half. And then, like I said, you just turn them upside down in a baking dish, a glass baking dish, with just a little bit of water, about that much water coming up the sides. 
and then I still go ahead and cover them with foil loosely and then that will help them to steam and uh, and you'll know because this outside will be nice and soft I mean it'll be nice and pliable you can push on it you can see it moves around and you can scoop that out and mash it you can serve it like I said mashed you can make a savory dish out of it uh, you can cube this you can make a, and, th and that goes for any of these uh, squashes here they're all going to be basically made the same way you know even the turban squash the princess pumpkins the Hubbard squashes here the blue pumpkins the larger Hubbards um, regular pumpkin any of these can be cooked in the same fashion and like I said the larger ones you would have more of the flushed for like mashing or cubing or for canning like I said the thicker flushed ones will last longer in the winter than your smaller thinner flushed winter squash but you should get you know the larger ones should last you through the winter in a cool dark place these right here will it'll take about two months for one of these two and a half to three months for one of these to get to the point where you probably really need to use it up these were nice and yellow I probably have another two or three weeks on these and I, I need to use them up so anyway I hope this helps you learn how to make squash and like I said just bake them upside down in a pan of water they'll kind of get you might have to take a fork or a knife or something and kind of pop them up they'll get kind of suctioned down into that glass dish uh, but that's good that means that steam is working and it really steamed up but how I'm making them today in the rings that's how I like to do it because they're already sliced and then uh, you can serve them in rings that way otherwise they're, uh, they're you know you, you have to serve them like kind of like in a boat like in a half boat um, you can stuff these uh, with just about anything and you can also even make little soup bowls out of them as well so I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more about winter squash. And if you have any questions, be sure and leave a comment below. This is Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. I want to thank you for joining us. Be sure and hit that subscribe button. Okay? Blessings. Okay, here we've just saved our acorn squash seeds. See that? Just put them in some water got as much, much of the membrane off as we possibly could we just wrote acorn squash on here 1211 and in two or three days we're just going to flip that over because we do want the air to get in there but we also don't want any kind of flies or mites in there so i'm just going to sit this over some place in a cool dark spot where it doesn't get too hot and uh, remember the seeds will melt and go away once they get this uh, slimy stuff off of them the stuff that keeps them from growing you know a fruit inside of a fruit once we get that kind of fermented off there, it'll take about two or three days, four days at the most for a large seed, two days to three days at the most for a small seed. Lay these seeds out on some parchment paper, let them dry for another day or two, then you gather them up and you put them inside of a paper packet and then you label them. It is that simple to save seeds.